All right, we have um, another aspect of Dentrix, which um, is very helpful. Um, we, we want as much information in the least keystrokes or maneuvers as we possibly can that we're looking at with um, with our patients. And um, we can obtain that a lot of times with either um, the cursor held briefly over a particular appointment on the, um, on the schedule here, bringing up lots of information. There's not a whole lot in Tarzan's uh, chart there, but I'm going to just hover over AJ's, and there'll be quite a bit more there, including a, a photograph of a well, shift key, um, lots of other information. But if we wanted additional information, it's very simple. Again, always select the patient, patient you're interested in, and in this particular case, you go up to the eye, and in fact, the more information detail or all-seeing eye. You click that. And it brings up a window here that um, has a lot of a lot of great info. <clears throat> we have all the siblings for our blended families, um, all their appointments that um, have been scheduled, uh, birth date, age, address, appropriate um, contact information, um, the next appointment that's available, and also a little brief uh, ledger, which in back office would not be appropriate typically, but. Um, just a lot of great information that's um, obtained super duper quickly. So um, just a brief introduction to the all-seeing eye. All right, and uh, before we start anything, we have to uh, update and verify and document the um, patient's medical history. If we look up here at the, at the cross, this should be a red cross, and it's white because there are no uh, pieces of information, <clears throat> excuse me, entered there. So. Um, as a part of the new patient process, we would select that, bring up the medical alerts box. There's nothing in here whatsoever. We would hit edit, and this person happens to be a healthy child. So we would scroll down to healthy child. You can't just leave it blank. When you hit a healthy child and hit OK, it populates this area right here. And when you hit close, if you watch this cross up top, you'll see that it will instantly turn red. When it's red, we know we have an entry. And uh, again, if we wish to know from this screen what the status is of this child, we simply hit it and it brings it up. But um, even more importantly than that is our view from our appointment book. What that has done is place a cross in the upper right hand side of this patient's chart. Every patient will have one of these because again, you, if they're healthy, they need to be specified as a healthy child. But um, this also correlates to our heads up display here. Um, again, appointment notes, patient notes, guarantor notes, follow the child, um, follow this particular child is, um, is essential. Uh, we're going to eliminate this as a test section. And um, as you'll soon see, we had an opportunity to enter um, the fact that this child loves Star Wars. So it's, uh, again, part of our customer service um, hope that we could customize our interactions with our patients as much as we can. So the patient note will travel with the patient no matter where they are and how many how many visits they come. Appointment notes only come with a particular appointment. So all these uh, particular situations that the fact that the child prefers to be called Tarzan and loves Star Wars should be placed in the patient notes so it's always available for everybody to see. All right, uh, another supplement that we'll be reviewing today is the use of what's known as the document center. Um, the icon is right here. And um, if there's nothing in the document center, you'll notice that it uh, doesn't have any papers. This is an open drawer right down here. And if there were things inside, you would see a little white um, rectangle indicating there's some papers inside that filing cabinet or, or uh, drawer. Um, Document Center is used to house uh, scanned charts when we've converted our paper charts to electronic. Uh, when we receive x-rays or any correspondence from orthodontists, endodontists, periodontists, the letters are, are scanned in and kept in the Document Center. So typically, we'll have uh, documents in here for, um, for review and, and consultation. Um, let's go ahead and select AJ, first of all. And notice how this uh, became populated here versus if we selected jungle, the paperwork disappears. So there's nothing in jungle, but there is, but there are materials to look at in AJ's chart. So 
let's click the document center it'll open it up for us and because we selected uh, AJ specifically it'll bring up his document center every patient has one um, this little pop-up here comes up uh, with specific notes uh, notes are important for the front for scheduling and, and things like that so in this case so it doesn't keep coming up I'm gonna hit do not select this alert again and hit OK um, the uh, document center screen looks like this um, again it tells you this is AJ Culp here same thing up top and um, you simply uh, you can double click on this and this is all the different categories that AJ has correspondence with um, for example um, we have correspondence here with Dr. Edmonds relative to his um, wisdom teeth extraction so you open that up by double clicking double click again and then you have this uh, letter that was scanned in here in reference to his wisdom teeth being extracted. You also have what's uh, called a tooth chart section. You double click on that and then click again and it brings up what the individual looked like at that particular visit. Um, this is very reminiscent of our tooth chart discussion earlier but uh, every time a recall patient comes in you would take a, a um, screenshot of their tooth chart and the tooth chart uh, image is then pasted into the recall tooth chart section of their chart so that we can see what they looked like at each time they give us a little snapshot of what they look like um, every six months and that would be in this section here if it gets too cluttered you can simply close these um, scan charts everybody should have those as well and what that is are um, literally scanned in images of the paper chart when we were fully um, well, uh, before we were fully um, electronic uh, we have treatment plans uh, listed here uh, that's more front office of course and then we have um, x-rays as well whoops yeah let's quit this for now we have uh, x-rays here which we can check at a moment's notice double clicking on that provides us uh, all this level of information that is uh, vital to taking care of uh, AJ's teeth correctly so the other thing that's very useful and is not actually in this particular chart but will be in most is a uh, correspondence uh, orthodontics so uh, the dental assistant should get used to opening up this section confirming uh, extraction requests made by orthodontists specifically and see if it jives with our uh, tooth chart recommendations for extractions that's uh, that's very important um, the front office is typically responsible for entering this information into the um, document center itself the dental assistant would simply be accessing those situations most often so um, that'll do it for this thank you all right um, looking back at our scheduler or scheduling view I um, wanted to bring up a, a very powerful and important tool that we have here um, again you'll see some icons in the upper left I'm sorry the upper right hand side of AJ's chart um, which simply don't exist in this area here and these are very important number one um, this red cross otherwise known in our um, in the practice as a heads-up display is used to provide very very valuable information at a single click um, so you don't go and have to hunt for um, certain items um, it's very easy to access you just simply uh, press your mouse right over it and click it brings up this little window first of all medical alerts again we identify kids um, even healthy kids as healthy kids instead of uh, leaving this area blank if they were healthy it tells us exactly what's happening um, other medical conditions that were pertinent will be listed here as well so obviously a very important section appointment notes is specifics for that very appointment and would not show up in the Red Cross at subsequent appointments for example sometimes insurance companies cover fluoride only once a year and therefore you might put a note fluoride covered oops, once per year and therefore um, that particular note would be used for the hygienist for example to ask as to whether or not 
or investigate as to whether or not this ins this visit would qualify for insurance coverage at that I'm sorry for uh, fluoride usage at this point. Um, on previous videos, uh, you in, I indicated and placed a patient note in the family file. Patient refers to be called AJ. Uh, just referring back to that, going back to the patient or family file here, you can see that it is emanating from this section of the file right there. So again, that's all tied together, which is important. Um, the patient notes are always traveling with the patient at all times. Um, as part of our five-star car five star customer service protocol, if a patient wants to be called a very specific name, for example, it's very important to list it here. Uh, otherwise, um, other examples of, of things you'd put in here would be uh, phonetic pronunciations of maybe not so obvious names to pronounce. Um, uh, the um, application of Frankel scores for for moms, which is a method of kind of uh, rating moms as to how easy or not so easy they are to get along with. Um, and all that is very, very helpful in here. If we find that the notes are starting to get lengthy, that is the quantity of notes, for example, uh, just uh, go ahead and enter a couple of extra things here. We notice that we develop a sidebar at the top. If you see the sidebar, that tells you that there's a lot more information inside that we need to access. There are no sidebars down here indicating that everything that you need to see is right at the surface. So um, please pay attention to that as you are looking at this heads-up screen. Um, the information here is vital. In fact, I would suggest that for every patient you're about ready to see before saving them, I would simply hit the heads up display, review the notes, review the pronunciation of the names, and any other pertinent information for that visit before calling the patient back to the chair. That way you're informed and everything should go very smoothly. All right, the next section of the uh, chart that I'd like to cover is referral analysis. Referral analysis is very important because we'd certainly like to know how people came to know about our practice and um, who's talking about us and how they came to see us. And then we also want to track who and where they go to so we can have follow-ups. Um, there are lots of situations where um, parents forget and um, it's an excellent tool to remind them um, as to why they were referred and of course where they were referred as well. If you look right up here at the top of the chart, you'll see um, an icon that says patient referrals. It's got a, um, a green arrow and then a dotted line, which is to outline an individual. And that's important because if you just simply glance at this, there are no referrals in this patient's chart, just by simply this dotted figure right here. So a lot of information just simply from a visual scale. I'm going to click that and it opens up this window. Let's start with the referred by section. We're going to add a referral to AJ's chart by clicking add referral. And say for instance this uh, patient is coming from another patient. You would hit OK. And um, every patient in our database can be brought up here. For example, we're going to say that AJ was referred to our office by Braden. So we'd simply select Braden and um, you can see his name right here. Say for instance AJ needs uh, orthodontic care. Um, we would refer him to Dr. Daniluk. And by the way, if we look up here, you'll see that the referred patient referral button is now filled in. Um, that dotted line and empty figure is now filled in by um, a figure. And that tells you that this guy has referrals loaded, which is, again, really important. So let's click that icon again opens up the box and this time instead of finding out where they came from because this is referred by we're gonna we need to send AJ to a different office for some care so we're gonna refer them to somebody go over here to add referral click the button and it brings up all the referrals in our database typically our referrals are for orthodontics and we refer to Dr. Daniluk so there he is we select that and hit OK or you can double click and the referral shows up beautifully right here. Close and again the referral, patient referral section remains colored indicating that there are indeed referrals present. Alright, we're uh, talking about another section of Dentrix here. 
Um, for this situation, we're going to be using Jungle's chart. We're going to click there. And um, we're going to be talking about use of the prescriptions module. Um, if for some reason you don't have um, access to the prescription module, we can simply change that. And that'll aid Dr. Culp in uh, getting the prescriptions written for the patients. So again, we're going to select Jungle. We're going to go to the tooth chart. And the prescriptions module is right up here. Again, highlighting your cursor over it tells you what it is. The bottle is white and therefore there are no prescriptions in Tarzan's chart at this point. We're going to click that and it'll bring up the window, the standard window here. Um, and again, if there was any prescriptions uh, written for this patient, they would be listed here as well. We're going to hit new and say, for instance, this patient needs uh, a fluoride uh, prescription style toothpaste because of their cavity risk. The descriptions here have all the pre-listed prescriptions uh, that we use typically. You would hit this down arrow and it starts to list them here. Uh, we would scroll down until we hit, in this case, we're going to do a Colgate Prevenant 5000 Booster Spearmint Flavor. Clicking on that then fills in all the details. Dispensing one tube, I typically do a refill of two. Um, we have uh, generic substitution permitted. And then the, uh, the SIG are the directions. Use once or twice daily, whatever it may be. And then um, if you try to just hit OK, it's going to say, hey, wait a minute, you didn't print this. So um, do you want to print it now? Uh, yes. And instead of coming up with that extra window, you can just simply go to print first, and it won't ask you that, of course. So it is now printed the prescription. It is also recorded it here. And then once it uh, is ready to go, it is uh, signable by Dr. Colt. Um, in this situation, it's typically sent up front. So the ladies up front are aware of that. Um, just need to go grab it and then uh, bring it back to, to Dr. Colt for a signature. So very straightforward. Um, and then when I close this, if you remember, it was white before. And now as I close it, it turns red and there's a little RX next to it, indicating that at a glance that this patient has had a prescription um, provided to him or her, and um, you can look at that history at any time.